Okay, so what I was talking about was we need to write a down the chain fraction. A can be expressed as two times two times two. Well, can be expressed as two times two times three. Well, you can cancel two of the keys in the numerator and the denominator. That is why a over twelve is equivalent to two over three. Right? A plus is equivalent to two thirds. Um, you can also look at it from the perspective of saying a to a twelve are divisible by four, and that would be equal to two over three. Um, Proverbs thirty, same non-trivial fraction that you've done there. from what we're getting ready to work at today. So we're going to simplify rational expressions. Um, we're going to start, we're still going to keep talking about that ticket sales income um, and the uh, number of tickets sold. We're still looking at these functions. Um, we did this yesterday, but let's rewrite that algebraic rule for the rational function that gives the income per ticket sold. So that function u of x is equal to the income function on top, so negative 25x squared plus 750x over the <clears throat> excuse me, uh, ticket sold function, negative 25x plus 750. Now, we need to plug that into our uh, Y1 and look at the table of values between 0 and 30. There are some things that we should notice. Um, and then I want you to factor the numerator and the denominator um, and remove the common factors. And I want you to compare that to um, the function U of X. Okay? And then look at this table of values. What does that look like? They're all the same, right? X and Y are the same. So that looks like the function Y equals X. Um, because your X and your Y values are the same. And then when we scroll down to 30, all of a sudden we get the error. Okay? So, <clears throat> um, we notice that Y equals X for all the values and there's an error at 30. All right, so let's factor. Okay, let's factor the numerator and the denominator. Uh, both of them have GCFs. The numerator has a GCF of negative 25x. When we take that out, we're left with x minus uh, 30. And the bottom has a GCF of just negative 25. Both those terms don't have an X. So that leaves us with X minus 30. So what do these numerators and denominators have in common? They've got X minus 30 on the top and on the bottom. They've also got negative 25 on the top and on the bottom. So if we relate this to um, the factoring that we did with just like 8 over 12, if it's in the top and in the bottom and it's multiplication, okay, this is negative 25 times x times x minus 30. The bottom is negative 25 times x minus 30. Then that means that we can cancel those factors, okay? We can cancel that because the top and the bottom have that in common, and all we are left with is x. That's why the table of values looked like 
the function y equals x. All the x and y values were the same because it simplified down to the function of just plain x, but we had the error at 30 because um, that's where the denominator equals 0. Okay, that's where the denominator equals 0. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, um, I have a little note there, okay? In this case, g of x does not always equal u of x. That means that they don't always have the exact same x and y values. Um, because if we just plugged in x, then we wouldn't get an error at 30. We get 30 at 30. Um, so, what I'm trying to say is g of x is just the simplified version of that original function u of x, but it does not have the exact same derivation. Okay? It does not have the exact same derivation. So it, it is the simplified version, but it's not the exact same function. All right? So I want you to go through. <coughs> f of x has a discontinuity because there's an error there, but it's not a vertical asymptote. Okay? Um, f of x did not have a vertical asymptote at 1 and 3. It only had a vertical asymptote at 1. Um, and the simplified version did not have that discontinuity at 3. We call this a removable discontinuity, or more common to refer to as a hole. Okay? Uh, we call it a hole. It's created when you cancel factors in the numerator and in the denominator. So notice we canceled x minus 3 in the numerator and the denominator, and we have a whole at x equals 3. We have this other error at x equals 3. So when you cancel that factor, you set that equal to 0 and solve it just kind of like you do with the vertical asymptotes. Um, you should always identify removal discontinuities before you do vertical asymptotes. Okay? You should always identify removal discontinuities before vertical asymptotes because if you cancel something in the denominator, then that can't create a vertical asymptote anymore. Okay? It does not create a vertical asymptote. Removal discontinuities trump asymptotes. Okay? Um, so please be aware of that moving forward. Oops. Okay. So. I'm